Hi guys, this is Penguin Designs, and in the previous episode, I promised that we'd make the player dynamically lose mass, and well... I lied. In this episode, we'll be creating the score UI using the new tools in Unity 5. So to begin with, we're going to create a GUI image by going to Game Object, UI, Image. And after naming it, we can set the transform. I found that an X position of 85 and a Y position of 35 positions it nicely and a width of 140 and a height of 45 works perfectly. Although you can clearly change these numbers if you want. Now let's change the color to something a little more appealing. So a black with about an 130 alpha looks great. Now we can maximize the game. We can see that the rectangle is not staying in place. This is because Unity is anchoring it to the center. To change this, select the anchor and then set it to bottom left. Now if we maximize the game once more, we can see that it's sticking to the bottom left of the screen like we want. Now we can create the text by selecting Game Object UI Text. To make it easier to see, once it's on the grey background, we should set the color to white. Now we can change the text to something like score colon zero, but this is just so that we can see it better while we're designing it. We'll also use its position exactly the same as we position the GUI image. This is made easy by Unity's snapping tools. Also, don't forget to anchor it to the bottom left, just like we did with the GUI image. So centering its text alignments on the X and Y axis helps it be become more visually pleasing. And finally, changing the font size to something like 18 brings it all together. Now, I don't particularly like the default Arial font. And although I don't know what they use in Agario, I will use one of my favorite fonts, Montserrat. To get this font into Unity, we first need to download it. By opening up your browser and typing in Montserrat font, once downloaded from Fonts Grill, you'll have a zip file that we'll need to extract in order to use it. You can extract it anywhere you want, and to use it, we first need to create a fonts folder in Unity. Then, if we drag Montserrat underscore bold into the Unity fonts folder from File Explorer, we have successfully imported the font. Now, we can simply drag the font under the font section of the score text UI. Now that's it as far as the UI stuff goes. Now we can begin writing the code. And although we could create another code file, it would actually be easier just to open up the eat script. So in here, we want to create two variables. The first will actually store the score text and the other will store the score as a number. Unfortunately, in order to use the Unity UI in code, we need to explicitly tell Unity that we want to. To do this, at the top, we need to add using UnityEngine.UI. Now we can declare the variable by first making it public and its data type is just text. I've named it letters in this example. The next variable is not actually going to be public because we don't need to see it in Unity. We could write the keyword private, but if you don't write anything, Unity defaults to private. So it can just be set to a data type, which is int, and that's because we want a number with no decimals. I have now named the variable score. Now, inside the if statement, where the player has eaten the food, we can increase the score by 10, just like in Agario. A quick way of writing this is score plus equals 10, semicolon, which is just a simple way of writing score equals score plus 10, semicolon. Now we need to set the GUI text to display the new score. So we can access the text by writing letters.text and we can simply write equals open quotation mark score colon space close quotation mark plus score semicolon. The plus sign allows us to concatenate or join the score variable with some kind of text and that's it. All we did was increase the score number, then change the text on the UI text object to display the new score. Before we can press play to the game, we need to actually drag our GUI text into the variable that we declared on the eat script. And when we run the game, we can see that by eating some food, the score increases. But I have noticed one bug in the game. And that's that if the player gets very large, a white hole forms inside the player. This issue is formed by something called clipping. 
because if we look at the game in a 3D view, we can see that the player is so big that the camera is actually looking inside the player. The way to fix this is, once we've stopped the game, we can set the near clipping on the camera to about negative 1000. This will prevent this issue from ever occurring again. So, thanks for watching the video and please consider subscribing, because in the next week we'll actually be making the player dynamically lose mass as I promised. The fully commented source code will be available as well as the project files from a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.